I'm Dr. J, and this is a second video in a three-part series discussing the Central Limit Theorem. A link to the first video will be up here, as well as down in the description below, as well as a PDF version of these slides. In the previous video, we defined the Central Limit Theorem and we ended on this slide right here. So this slide basically shows you the ways in which the sample average and the sample sum can converge to a normal distribution. I want to point out here that for now, for what we're talking about with the central limit theorem, we're talking about IID random variables. Those are independent and identically distributed. And because they're identically distributed, each of the individual random variables has a common expectation mu and a common variance sigma squared. All right, so now this particular video is going to talk about how do we actually use this central limit theorem in practice, okay? And so what I think about is I think about looking at a histogram like this histogram of yield and saying, look, that looks like a bell-shaped curve. That is, it looks like the probability density function for a normal random variable. And I want to know, well, what would be the mean for that normal random variable and what would be the standard deviation or variance for that normal random variable? And so that's the way that I think about using this central limit theorem is how do I approximate this distribution when n is large? Okay, so when n is large, this is the way we do it. We can say that, hey, that sample mean has an approximate normal distribution. My notation for approximate distribution is the tilde with a little dot above it, okay? So it has an approximate normal distribution with the mean for that, sorry, the expectation for that sample mean and the variance for that sample mean, which we showed on the previous video. So the expectation for the sample mean is mu, the variance is sigma squared divided by n, Therefore, the sample mean has an approximate normal distribution that has a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared divided by n when the sample size is sufficiently large. Okay. For the sample sum, we do the same thing. The sum, though, has a different expectation of variance, so it has an approximate normal distribution where its expectation is n times mu and its variance is n times sigma squared. All right, so that's the way that I think about these normal distributions, and that way I can approximate those distributions, like on the previous slide, with this normal distribution. All right, let's, so let's show a couple of examples using random variables that you know of. So probably the least like normal distribution that we have, that's probably not true, but this is a pretty far cry from being normally distributed, is a uniform random variable, and in particular we're using a standard uniform random variable here. As a reminder, a uniform distribution has a flat probability density function in between its upper and lower uh, endpoints, that is between 0 and 1. All right, so it's flat, it looks nothing like this bell-shaped curve that has a single mode that uh, is symmetric around that mode that doesn't have observations too far off, well, I guess it does have that. Okay, but so this doesn't really look like a normal distribution at all, and yet when we take sample averages and sample sums, we're going to get something that looks like a normal distribution. So for this slide, let's talk about the, um, okay, first, in order to know what that normal distribution is going to be, we need to find the mean and the variance of this uniform distribution. We did that on a previous video, so I'll put a link up here to that uniform video, but we found there that the mean or the expectation for uniform is one half, and that the variance for this standard uniform is one over one twelfth. 1 over 1 twelfth, just 1 twelfth, okay? So now that we know the expectation of the variance of each of the individual uniform random variables, we can calculate uh, what this approximating normal distribution would be. So in particular, if we're looking at the sample average or the sample mean, then we have an approximate normal distribution that has a expectation of 1 half and a variance of 1 twelfth times n, right, where that n is on the denominator. Okay, if we're looking at the sample sum, then we have an approximate normal distribution whose mean or expectation is n divided by 2 and whose variance is n divided by 12. Okay, so let's just do some, a simulation of these normals, of these uniforms, calculate their, I think we do this in terms of the means, so here's histograms of a whole bunch of averages of uniforms and plotted on top of that histogram is the probability density function for the normal we had on the previous slide. Unfortunately, I don't remember off the top of my head what n was in this uh, picture, but there is a R code that you can go look at to figure out what n was, uh, and that will be clickable from a link down below. Okay, so this is what the means look like. 
If we take the same data we used to construct this histogram and we look at sums, then we get something that looks very similar, right? Basically, the only thing that happens is that x-axis changes, right? So when we add means, we had x-axis that ranged from about 0.47 to about 0.53. But when we look at sums, uh, and actually between those two, you can figure out how many uh, normals or how many uniforms there were in this sum. So I'll leave that up to you to figure out how many were actually used in the sum and used in the average. Okay, so this is an example of how even uniform random variables that don't look normal at all, right? When you have a large enough sample size, when you're taking those averages and sums, they have approximate normal distributions. All right, so let's look at another example. That is a binomial distribution. Remember that we talked about a binomial distribution, link up here, and it, we, we talked about it as the sum of a set of Bernoulli random variables. And so if we have a set of Bernoulli random variables, call it xi, and they're independent with the same probability, now we have a collection of independent and identically distributed random variables. And if we take their sum, we know that that sum has a binomial distribution, right? And it's binomial distribution where n is the number that we're taking in the sum, and p is the probability of success that's common to all of these individual random variables. Now, we can calculate the expectation here, and we did that before. It's just NP, and the variance is NP times 1 minus P. All right, so now we have the expectation of the variance, and we can calculate an approximating normal distribution for this binomial random variable. And again, this binomial random variable doesn't look very normal, right? First off, it's a discrete distribution, right? Whereas a normal is a continuous distribution. And yet, when N is sufficiently large, we will have an approximating normal distribution for this binomial. Okay, and that approximating normal distribution will look like this. Uh, but there's a formal version of the central limit theorem, right? If we subtract up the expectation, divide by the standard deviation, we get something that converges to a normal. More intuitively, more uh, you know, usable in practice is that the approximate distribution here is a normal with mean NP and variance NP times one minus P. Okay. So let's talk about this in the context of a roulette example. All right, so roulette is a uh, game of chance. This game, uh, in particular, if we're looking at the European roulette wheel, it's going to have 30, uh, 39 total slots. 19 of those slots will be black, 19 of those slots will be red, and one will be green. The way the game is played is you take a little ball and it's spun around this table as this roulette wheel is spinning, uh, and it will land in one of those slots. And if you guessed correctly which slot it's going to land in, then you will be rewarded with money. If you did not guess correctly, then your money will be taken away. And so what we're going to do is sort of what it might be the simplest bet that we can do. We're just going to bet on black. Okay, and so the question is, what is the probability that I will win more than I lose in 99 attempts of this wheel? Okay, so if I play this game 99 times and I'm only betting on black, which means that I win any time that black, the ball lands in a black slot. The question is, how, what's the probability that I will win more times than I've lost? Okay. So this is exactly a binomial random variable. And so we can treat it that way. We can say, let Y be the number of wins that I've had in my 99 attempts. And with the probability of success, when I bet on black, which is the 19 slots, divided by the 39 total slots, if we assume that each slot is equally likely, which seems like a reasonable assumption. And now we know how to deal with binomial random variables. We've done it before. So we just now need to translate this question into a probability expression. So what's the probability that I win more than I lose is the probability that I win at least 50 times. Because if I win 50 out of those 99 times, then I will have won more than I've lost. Whereas if I only won 49 times, then I would have lost 50 times, and I would not have won more than I lost. So the question is here, is what's the probability that I won more than I lost? What's the probability that y is greater than or equal to 50? Okay. And now, this is not set up to do the calculation that we know how to do with binomial random variables. In particular, this is the opposite of the cumulative distribution function. Right? This is greater than or equal to, not less than or equal to. Okay. So we need to rearrange things using probability. So here we go. We can take the probability of being greater than or equal to 50. That's equal to 1 minus the probability of being less than 50. 
But for discrete random variables, we still can't calculate that quantity, at least very easily. But that's equal to 1 minus the probability of being less than or equal to 49. And again, because you can't be anywhere between above 49 and less than 50. Okay. Now we're going to do the calculation in R. So we set N equal to R99. We set P equal to 19 over 39. We use this 1 minus the CDF evaluated at 49. And we find that the result is 0.399. Right, that is the probability that we win more than we lose when we play this game 99 times is about 0.399. Okay. All right, we didn't use the center limit theorem at all, so let's use it now. So another way to solve this problem, an approximate way to solve this problem, is to say, okay, y is the same thing, but now we're going to approximate y by a normal random variable, let's call it x. This normal random variable has a expectation n times p and a variance np times 1 minus p. And now we can do the calculation. What's the probability that it's greater than or equal to 50? Well, that's approximately, actually it's exactly equal to, I don't know why I put the approximate sign there, 1 minus the probability that x is less than 50. Oh, I see, I see. I put the approximation there because the probability that y is greater than or equal to 50 is approximately the same as 1 minus the probability that x is less than 50. The fact that we use x on the right and y on the left. And now we can use R and we can do the calculation and we find that the probability is about 0.36. Okay, so a little bit different than what we had before. And so when we talk about having N sufficiently large, right, our deviation here is because N for this problem perhaps wasn't large enough to get an accurate enough, perhaps, for our purposes, approximation. I will comment right now, because we're using a discrete random variable here and approximating it by a continuous random variable, uh, there is something called a continuity correction that you can use that will improve this approximation, but I'm not going to talk about it any further. All right, so that wraps up part two. In part three, we're going to be talking about a more in-depth astronomy example. Hope to catch you there.